Sure. <laughs> you it's just gonna look over to you. Wait, what are what are we talking about though? We're talking about whatever you're comfortable with. We. Because I, sh I, I some answers before. I'll have to think about before I say, yeah. so I don't. That's why it's not live. Judge. So if you need to stop and think, you can. Okay. Or and you guys like edit that out, so yeah. okay. Yeah, everything gets censored. Um. Okay. How are you? I'm good. I don't know. How do you feel? Better, actually. Healthy. Yeah. The H word. The H word? <laughs> the, that's what we call it here, the H word. Because everybody comes to see you and tells you you look healthy, which means you're looking fatter. For real. Then you I came yeah, in at like 85 pounds and I probably weigh like 115, so. You're such a beautiful girl. Like, you. I don't. I hope you understand that, <laughs> that you are. So it's good to see. You the H word. The H word. <laughs> um, After you, how long you were 85 pounds? Oh, yeah. 66. 66 days. Although December 1st will be six months off heroin, though. Is your 14th November? November 19th. Okay. Does that make it six months? Oh, they're not letting me out. I'll probably have like a year before I get out. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I don't know. The prison systems offer a lot of programs and education, drug treatment. They have all that stuff in prison. Mm -hmm. Safer custody than here in Greenville? Probably. I don't know. In my opinion, this county doesn't take advantage of some of the services that they could. Like what? Mm. <laughs> you can think about it. I just can't, I can't, like, I'm, I can't bash the county. Crosby told me not to bash Green County. Um, they, I don't know, just like their, their AA is like once every two weeks for like an hour. And I just, like, why for once every two weeks? Most people are here for two months, maybe. Mm -hmm. So that's four AA meetings. Going to meetings or anything? Um, I signed up for it and they let me go once and they took my name off the list for I don't know why. So then I got skipped for one of them, which is so the next one I'll go to will be a month after the first one I went to. And actually, I won't go to that because I'll be locked up somewhere else by then. Okay. So I'm just saying, like, that's not really. It's not helping you. I just, I mean, I don't know. They say 90 meetings in 90 days. And in my opinion, this jail is small enough that they should be able to accommodate mm -hmm. that. Like Montgomery County has a lot more people, but their jail holds like 40 women, yeah. like max. And they're always full. Yeah. Is this full? Is yes. This? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're like ERing misdemeanors. Like that means like emergency releasing them. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh really? Yeah. They just like book you in, and then they just call your name, and they kick you out so they can book somebody else in. Nice. But most of us have yellow bands. That means you're a felon. Yeah, I will be on the 19th. What did you do to get in here? Um, I had a possession of heroin charge from a year and a half ago, something like that. So it's like when your past came back to haunt you when you came home. Yeah, before I left for Florida for rehab, I caught a possession charge in Greene County. And um, before I got arraigned on it, I was already in rehab and I stayed in Florida for a while and then I was in New Jersey. And when I came back, I had to deal with it, so. But you were dealing with the <coughs> you were trying to, you were trying to get clean. You were yeah. To um, the shot. I was on Vivitrol shot? before I came in here. I was off heroin for two or three months. How long was that? I don't know. That's about right. Like, yeah, like two months probably. I got the shot July 1st, right? I think it was the first. It was July 1st I got the shot. Mm -hmm. Or no, that was when I got locked up. It was the 7th that I got the shot. So, and I was on that. And that was working really well for the heroin for me. It's the only way I've ever stayed off heroin, ever. And it worked really well. I just was like, had other substance abuse issues that I was trying to work through when outpatient. And I wasn't really given that opportunity before being locked up again. So. And that happened in September. They took you from the hospital 
they took me from the hospital to the jail to here and I detoxed in here and bonded out and got the shot the day I bonded out and then I got violated on my bond probation for using other illicit substances. Uh, THC, benzodiazepines, methamphetamine, and cocaine. That's a, heroin? No. Why? The Vivitrol worked for heroin. I didn't want to do heroin. I watched people do heroin, sell heroin, all types of stuff, and it didn't bother me at all. It was really strange, actually. It's weird to be a heroin addict and be around heroin and not want to do it. That's really weird. But it worked for me. And I tell people in here that it worked for me. And I think that everybody should get it. And they also took me off the shot when they put me in here as well. My outpatient said they would come give it to me, and they were denied that. You know why? I don't know. They said my insurance was is void while I'm in here because I have care source. But my outpatient said they would pay for it, uh -huh. like come give it to me and pay for the medication, like the shot itself, and it was still denied. Yeah. Because drugs do come in this jail. <coughs> so I think, in my opinion, to take someone who is working it took six months for them to detox and get the shot to take them off the shot mm -hmm. is in my opinion a mistake yeah. and if they think there's not drugs in this jail they're sadly mistaken when you bonded out of here after they took you from the hospital right did you already have the mindset even though you were going to get the shot again that you were going to use something else no um i left a group like i got upset at one of my outpatient groups over some minor stuff, but I ended up leaving and I had someone come pick me up. And um, I don't know what really happened. He, had, Someone owed him money, so he stopped by to pick it up and they sold drugs. They sold heroin and cocaine and it was, I don't know, and Xanax. And I took Xanax first and that just, I don't know, makes you not think about everything else. And I literally woke up like three days later in a hotel room like with meth on the table and figured I should probably do it because it was there. That one friend, the wrong friend, picked you up, and that's what happened. Yeah. How did you feel when you came to? I didn't come home for a long time because, which was not ideal, because I was on the shot and everything was supposed to be okay. And if I went home, I probably could have avoided a lot of that. But I didn't really know what to say because I didn't really understand like why I wasn't like completely clean. But in my opinion, heroin's killing people and these other drugs aren't. So, I mean, they, they do, but heroin is literally killing people every day, all day. And these other drugs can be dealt with in a different way. Just because you have the shot, and it, it, like, it just helps heroin and alcohol, but for me, heroin. So, for me, it wasn't like, okay, well, now I'm not on heroin and all my problems are fixed. I still have mental health issues to deal with and I still have all these other PTSD, depression, anxiety, psychiatrics. I was seeing a psychiatrist and I was working on getting that stuff under control. But you don't go to jail for six days, bond out and get Vivitrol and be on basically, it's like real probation, I guess. I never heard of it before in my life. I, don't know. I didn't know it was serious. I thought bond probation was a joke, so anybody getting locked up in Greene County, it's not a joke, it's real. So I just felt like I should have been given a chance to deal with those issues. I understand using illicit substances is against the law or whatever, but they're not killing people. And I was taken off the shot and there's a point in time where if I would have been released for any type of reason or bonded out by a friend, by whoever. Like, I wouldn't have been on Vivitrol when I left. And I don't, wouldn't have had the clear head that I have since I've been here in 66 days. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it was a mistake to pull me off the shot, and I think they should be working to get more people on the shot instead of trying to force people into six-month-long lockdown. It's not even treatment. It's called behavior modification. They're putting drug addicts in behavior modification treatment centers that are inside jails. Mm. And I, I don't agree with that. I don't think that that helps people. Um, and maybe some people it does, but it, I've what had the- What are they doing in these behavior modifications? You sit in groups all day with people who don't want to be there, who are court ordered to be there, who are only there because 
their prison sentence is either longer, longer than that would have been, or they're trying to get their kids back, or whatever it is, but it's not because they want to be there. And you're locked down with county jail conditions, being treated like an animal, because I'm sorry, but that is how you're treated in the jail. Very few correction officers or deputies treat you like you're human. Mm -hmm. And who wants to do that? The conditions are horrible. You don't, you don't see the outside. You don't see the sun. None of that. And I just, that's not how I would want to do time. And I don't, I have the, the best treatment money can buy over and over and over. And it doesn't, that's not, for me, that, that never worked. And I don't think six months of it would do anything but make me resentful yeah. of the treatment system. And you're talking to the sheriff in Clark County and their scouting program where they are taking um, some of the, the female inmates that are addicts and taking them out of the jail to go get their shot. And they should do that. And they can bring them inside the jail. I, I don't. I don't understand what the pro I know Vivitrol is expensive and I understand the insurance issue, I guess, but they're spending so much money on the war on drugs and trying to get drug dealers off the street and drug addicts off the street and all this stuff. And it's like people like me who are just a 21-year-old drug addict are facing 12 months in prison for a few caps of heroin or a six month in a lockdown facility. I've been here, I'll be here 80 something days before I go to my sentencing. So that's nine months being locked up in a county jail. And I think the punishment should fit the crime, and I don't think that that should be your only option. There's other treatment. There's women's recovery. There's TCN. There's, there's Nova House. I wanted to do their dual diagnosis, mental health, and substance abuse program, and I was denied that as an option. And I just don't think that it's not one size fits all. And that's really, in my opinion, how they're doing it here. And in other counties too, but more so this county. When you came back here, you guys look cute. <laughs> when you came back here from you were in New Jersey. Yeah. Did you have did you want to use? I was using in New Jersey. You were. I came home using. Nice. Tell me that now. Yes, my mom didn't know that. <laughs> But um, but really though, my boyfriend there was using, um, and I was working full time, and I was had my, um, I mean, I had like my act together more than I had in a long time. I was able to keep a job and do stuff that I wasn't able to do before. But um, but he was using, and he didn't want to stop using. And even though I was using, I was still having withdrawals and getting sick, and I couldn't keep my job. I couldn't do this stuff without using. But I didn't want to keep using, and. He wasn't the same person when he was using, and we just did not see eye to eye on any of, we got together when we were sober. Yeah. So it just, if I would have stayed there, I was never going to get clean, and we were never going to like, it was never going to go anywhere because I was never going to stop using with him. Mm -hmm. So I came home knowing that I still had this problem, but thought I'd be better able to deal with it here mm -hmm. because I had the support from my mom and my family and a community that is trying to make New Jersey is very populated. They they don't really have. I mean, they know their drug problem is bad, but they they're not really doing anything about it. Dayton's addressing it. They're trying to. They're trying to. Yeah. And there's a lot of services that are offered in Dayton. Mm -hmm. So I tried to deal with it here, and I got Good Samaritan is where I was doing my outpatient, and they worked really well with me. They went above and beyond what they should have did for me, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that they still would. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to be helped by them. But I just felt that I should have got more time to deal with. You don't wake up and you're on Vivitrol and everything's better, and all of a sudden you can follow probation. Or like it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And if it does for you, that's great. But almost everybody sitting in this jail is here on a probation violation of some sort, or they'll be back on it. Yeah. And that's why they're not doing treatment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that you have to choose between prison and drug treatment when you know if you do this six month long treatment after you sat for 90 days downstairs in the jail then you go upstairs to their six month lockdown treatment facility you've been locked up nine months and you mess up one time on the outside and you lose everything that you worked for and you're going to go to prison anyway mm -hmm. so it's hard to to know the future even though you want to say i'm not going to use again everything's going to be great and well but we say that all the time and it doesn't always work that way even if you're not on heroin or you're not 
or you, you work with alcohol, you, you can't serve alcohol, you have to be home in a curfew, you can't be around felons. There's all these rules. It's not just using, it's all these rules. And if you break one of these rules, the job that you got, the school you're enrolled, all that stuff is gone, and you're gonna go do your time. So it's hard to, to say what, what you should do. And a lot of people are turning their, these treatment programs down, including me, probably. You should maybe cut that out. But <laughs> when you when you dropped on your test, it was because of the drugs that you used after you went with that friend. What? Wait, what? What? When she dropped dirty on that test, was it because of the drugs? Oh that no, you no. I used with my friend, and then I never stopped after that. Okay. I was like, well, I wasn't using every day, but I was using cocaine and meth you amphetamines. Like you disappeared for three and a half weeks. I pulled you out of the freaking apartment in Franklin, and then you. Asked you dropped off at the love truck stop. Yeah, um, what happened was, um, I I was using with him and this and I disappeared for like two or three weeks and I was staying in like a hotel motel type, you know, mm -hmm. type place, and um, like weekly rent place. Yeah. And um, the big <laughs> right. And I, I don't know. We actually got kicked out of there for me catching a charge there while I was out on bond, and then. We were still going to hang out with the same people, doing the same drugs, just in a different place. And that got messy, and I caught another charge out in Warren County, and it just was all bad. And then I came home anyway because I didn't really have anywhere else to go. And I caught two more charges, and everything was just like, like at first I didn't go home because I didn't know what to say. Like, sorry, Mom, I'm off heroin, but now I'm just doing meth. That's better, right? Like, you don't say that. And you don't think that, you know you're still like not, but I knew I wasn't gonna die or I felt like I wasn't gonna die. I didn't feel like every time I was out, like I was gambling with my life and maybe like other people don't agree with that, but as a heroin addict and burying your friends and watching your friends die on heroin over and over and over, it is not the same thing to me. A drug is a drug is a drug. You shouldn't be on drugs. Meth would have destroyed my life too. I'm not saying it wouldn't, mm -hmm. but I would have had a lot more time to, to try to fix that problem before I wound up in a body bag in my opinion. Did you watch your friends die? I, one of my friends just died since I've been in here. He was 23 years old. Played every team in high school with the sweetest kids you could ever meet. Do you remember the first time I ever met you? No. Mm -mm. You don't? No. Oh. Because you, you were using? Heavily. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad time for me. That's not a friendly April, that's for sure. No. And I feel good. Jail has been good for me. I'm not saying that it has. This has been an, honestly an awesome experience, and it's really strange to say that. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but, but luckily, though, keeping in mind, luckily, I have my mom who's taking care of me in here. I don't go without in here being in jail without someone on the outside to visit you and be able to call and be able to eat, basically. Yeah. For real. That's really rough. But I've met some of the most amazing women here. I really have, and I still write them, ones that have gone to prison, and wh who should have never went to prison, who you watch just, uh, like you can't believe that you're watching this happen to people. Like, one drug test sent my friend up for 18 months. And you're, you're she she you're just, married. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not, my deal was pulled. My probation deal was pulled when I, Feel that drug test. The first drug test I ever took, just saying. Really? Yes. And I am arrogantly thought that we were in Montgomery County, thought this was going to go like Montgomery County does, and that you, you know, got a couple chances or like, you know, some type of warning. No. I thought it'd be locked up for seven days at the worst. I'm like, uh, it's fine. I didn't even wear socks in. Okay. That's how I thought this was going to go. And I've been here 66 days and I will not be free for a, my, my charge carries 12 months. And if I turn down a six month lockdown facility, there's a good chance I will get maxed out on that time. Are you ready to go to prison? Yes. Yes, the county jail sucks. Yes, I am. You can go outside. I just got a letter from Angie. You get bananas, apples, applesauce, pizza on Fridays. Okay, real shoes. I'm sorry, but yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like today's. 
<laughs> Today's the day. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm so excited about my sentencing. I can't wait to go in there and be done with this because I've been here for 66 days. My court date is still two weeks away, mm -hmm. and I have not left the jail for anything. I've not gone to see a judge. I've got nothing but different answers from everybody, from my attorney, from my bond probation officer. Everybody's telling me something different. Even right now, I have no idea what they're trying to offer me because nobody seems to agree on what they're offering me. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to be here anymore. That's all I know. Is the county jail is hard time. This is hard time, maximum security time, and that's rough. Yeah. Prison, it's sad to say you have more freedom than you do in the county jail. So a lot of times, that's what they do though. They leave you in jail until you're so ready to go somewhere else, you'll make a deal that you wouldn't make. I would have never signed a deal for maxing me out of my time. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I've been here so long, I'm hungry, okay, hungry all day. Stay hungry. The showers suck, the beds suck, prison you get pillows, you get spring mattresses, I'm telling you. Like, and this is the small stuff, but it's big when you're locked up. You don't realize all the stuff that matters. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to see your people behind glass for nine months when you can go to prison and see them for the entire day, contact visits. Like, it's just that stuff that you think doesn't matter until you're in here, and it matters. And it leads you to make choices that maybe you wouldn't make. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen your, your mom in the same no. room. No. No, this is the first day. time I've seen her in the same room, and I can't even hug her. And that's, that, that is upsetting to me. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't know if she says when she talks to me, you know, she feels like she's getting her daughter back, and I feel like that, too. I mean, I'm grateful for this time. I really am. Like, it's, I've made a lot of really good friends, and I've learned a lot about myself, and I've learned a lot about where I want my life to go and what I want to do. It's unfortunate that I've made the choices I've made because that affects what you do with the rest of your life. There are some jobs that you can't get as a felon. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's not, it's going to be as easy for me to do the things that I wanted to do. But there has never been a better time for me to pull myself out of life and try to take a step back and try to focus on what's important. You really don't realize what's important and I really don't think that being in rehab or any of that doesn't really tell you that type of stuff because you're still afforded the same, what, commodities of life that you're just, you don't really understand what matters. And, and it, people, I don't know, at least in my pod here, that's like my family up there. I care as much about what happens to them as I do about myself. Mm -hmm. And we look out for each other. It really is for us. Not every part of the jail is like that. But for us, we've been together so long that that's how we are. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool to have, and it's cool to see. And it's, as a drug addict, you don't make friends like that. You don't make friends that really care about what happened to you. You know what I'm saying? You're a smart person. Yeah. You just don't make the best choices. No. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, and maybe, and maybe I do need behavior modification in that aspect because risky decisions and risk-taking and reckless behavior got me where I'm at. I mean, the charge that I caught originally, I honestly caught because I was being reckless. I got pulled over for a dim license plate light, which is, I'm pretty sure, illegal, by the way. However, that's not a big deal, right? But when you're so busy being reckless, shooting up in parking lots, and you leave blood on your arm when you get pulled over for a license plate light, you catch felonies. Like, not the best choice I've ever made, you know what I'm saying? And that was just reckless. Even for a drug addict, that's reckless. But you just don't care. And it's like kind of cool to be able to sit back and be like, wow, I could make better decisions. I really could if I really tried. Because you really don't feel like you can when you're really messed up like that. Everything yeah. just seems like you don't have any control over everything. And you're just like, all the time life is just moving by and you're just trying to keep up. Yeah. And it's cool to be able to like have a clear head and just think that, you know, the things could be different you know, that you can, and like I said, there are a lot of programs that you can do in prison mm -hmm. or in, in treatment, yeah. but. Are you already looking to, obviously you're looking forward to prison, which is. Ask anybody that's been right. in the county jail. <laughs> I'm telling After you. Um, I, I'm trying not to because it's um, doing time is hard to do if you look at it that way. Uh, like, like counting your days is bad, like all that type of stuff that you would like 
typically think makes your time hard makes it hard. So, I mean, I'm looking like forward to being done with all of this and having it all behind me, I guess. But I can't really say right now what I'm going to do after that. I mean, I'm hopefully going to try to acclimate into society as some type of upstanding citizen. But, but I really don't know what is next because I'm just trying to see what happens with this. You're literally living life day by day. Literally every day is the same. Every day, all day. I'm excited for something different and I'm excited to have a chance to do stuff like get my wisdom teeth pulled out in prison. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> for real though, they hurt really bad. Um, but there's just stuff in here that like, you know, that you can't do. You, there's not a library. There's not access to the type of medical, mental health, any type of health. There, there's just not access to that in here. So to be able to go somewhere else, and in prison it's like a community, it's made to live in. People do 25 years to life, people live in prison, it's made to live. Yeah. So for a drug addict who doesn't know how to live in communities or participate in anything in communities because all you're doing is getting high and worrying about yourself and menacing your community, it's, in my opinion, I'm hoping to be a, a good trial. You can go in there, and but you work. You can, you have to work. I think actually, or you don't have to, maybe. But I don't know. But you work in prison. They pay you. State pay. It's like twenty five dollars a month or something. That's really crazy, right? But, but it's your money, and you work for it, and it was honest work. So that's different, and you do normal stuff like other people do. Your days aren't like this, like they are in here. Like you're living. You're trying to get along with other people. You're meeting different people. Mm -hmm. All types of stuff. And it's, I don't know. I think it's going to be like a good way to ease into just learning how to be normal. Like, You're normal years. no, and I'm really different than when I first came in here. There's a couple girls that came in around the same time as me. So we've all been here this whole time together. And I was really quiet when I first came in. Not that I'm quiet because I'm not, but. I was coming off a lot of heavy uh, stimulant drugs. Um, my medications weren't all right. They took me off some medications that I wasn't allowed to have here. Because mm -hmm. um, people, I guess, can like you know save their medication and sell or some stuff like that. I don't know. So you can't always take the medication that you're prescribed. So I was coming off psych meds, coming off different drugs, thinking I was going to get out and then I didn't get out. It was a really like emotional hard time for me when I first got here and I was really worried about what was going on on the outside and then I found out that I was not going anywhere and then time goes by a lot faster <laughs> and I mean you really just you just do what you I mean I don't know you just do what you have to do every day you get in a routine and you try to watch for the drugs that come in and not do them, watch for the people that do that and try to distance yourself if you can. I mean, this jail is a really small jail so you really can't go too far but you just try to do the best you can to not make the same mistakes that you've made and I guess a lot of it, I used to think like, oh well, you know, if drugs came into the jail or when I go to prison, there's going to be drugs in prison and it's like, oh, well, I'm already locked up. There's nothing they can do about it, all this stuff. But when you've been clean for a long enough time, you start to realize that maybe you like yourself better when you're sober, you know? And people like me better when I'm sober. And I like me better when I'm sober. I really do. I look better. I feel better. I'm not, I mean, I looked like I was going to die when I came in here. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I thought I looked good. I was like, wait, you're telling me I'm too skinny? Where? <laughs> Who says that? You know what I mean? And then I put all this weight on and they're like, oh no, you look normal now. And I'm like, I'm like, really? Because I feel kind of heavy. <laughs> no. And they're like, they're like, no, you just look like you eat regular meals. I'm like, uh, well, I do. So yeah. it's good. And I'm, I mean, it sucks to be locked up. It does. But I am. I'm 21 and it's going to be really, um, it's not going to, it was never on my list to say I'm 21 and I'm going to have a prison number or I'm 21 and spent nine months locked up. They're both the same to me, honestly. Being locked up that long is like just something I never thought that 
I mean, my bond probation officer said to me when she met me um, something, and, well, not when she met me, but when she came to visit me after she locked me up after that drug test, and I'd only been here like seven days and just found out my bond was like $50,000, and I'm like, and I'm over here like, I don't understand like, what's going on right now. And she said something along the lines of, yeah, I feel like you've been getting away with stuff your whole life. And at the time, I'm like, no, I don't think so. I completed probation successfully before. Not me, but really, I have. And I'm honestly lucky that this is like the worst of my problems. Because <laughs> it could be worse, you know? And it is worse. There are a lot of people in here with worse cases than mine. And that aren't where I'm at mentally and it's hard to see that and it's hard to watch people that have kids and stuff like that going through stuff like this so really it sucks to be 21 and about to like do time like this because that's time to me like that's I never spent more than like you know a weekend in jail I think the longest was like 10 days or something Clark County it was like 10 days so this is like about to be some time for me <laughs> and There's nothing that's not real about what's happening right yeah it's very real um very real but I'm clean and I'm alive and that's, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know what else you can ask for really because it takes a long time, I think, to, to feel that way about it. And I never really have before. When I was in Florida after rehab, I felt good about it, mm -hmm. I guess. But I wasn't ever um, allowed like enough time, I think, before I relapsed to get to know myself and laugh with people. I mean, I laugh so hard in here. We laugh all day. Like, we get in trouble. You're not allowed to laugh in jail, right? <laughs> so, so uh, you know, like, and it's, it's good. Like, and I'm like, I wasn't like this on drugs and I didn't ever have any feelings like this on drugs. And don't get me wrong, there's lows too. Like, I have days. Everybody has days, especially in here. And those are hard. And if I was on the outside, I don't know if I would deal with them being sober because it's difficult to deal with emotions like that when you've been using for six years of your life at 21. <laughs> so it's hard, but we help each other through it and you just really just try to move forward and look at, look at it like, I mean, there, one of our good friends said to me and my friend that just rode out to prison, he said they can lock that lock but they can't stop that clock. So the clock goes on every day is a day that counts when they closer to when you're going to be out. And I'm kind of scared to get out, you know? Because I don't want to go back to living like that. I don't want to look like that. I don't want to live like that. Like no, that. and that's another thing. I feel really, um, I feel really bad about a lot of stuff that happened, you know? So it's good to not. At least she knows where I am, you know? And that's good. A lot of times she didn't. She didn't. Yeah. Especially when I wasn't living at home. Yeah. So it's good. It's good. We, I mean, I don't know. It was hard when I first came home from New Jersey. I just, we didn't really get along. And that was weird for us because me and my mom have been close my whole life. So for us to like not talk and stuff was like really weird yeah. to me. But I didn't know how to change it either at that time. I don't think either of us did. And I think it just was str strain. Everybody gets, I mean, a drug addict ruins a lot of people's lives, not just our own. So I'm glad that, that my brother still has his Xbox and his Xbox games and his car and that my mom has her jewelry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that stuff that, you know, it's replaceable, but but you can't ever really, you know, take all that stuff back. Like, just because drug addicts really have the line of thinking, like, well, I only pawned it. I didn't sell it. You can get it back. Like, we really think that when we're out there doing that stuff. We really do. So when you come to jail and you're like, I'm really sorry about all that stuff. Like, because you sit there and you're like, wow. Like, who thinks like that? People that are high think like that. So it's good to not be high. And you see girls after girls come in here and they're withdrawing and they're sick, like sick as a dog is sick. And we help them, we do what we can for them, but there's nothing you can really do. 
for somebody like that and every day it's like a reminder that like I'm glad that's not me. Yeah. Before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to ask her? I think she pretty much covered everything you love about. <laughs> um, so anything that you're my arms look good. Oh yeah. Do you remember when you saw him the first time? Yep. When was the first time that you saw her? Mm -hmm. In the backyard, I Deputy. think. Oh. The county deputy was pulling you out of the house. Oh, yeah. You came over to yell at her because she called the cops on you. I was was pretty sure I was gonna hit her. Yeah. I thought. <laughs> yeah. That was the day. Yeah, the days and days. Day. Like, so we were doing a story because you, know, you were pawning her stuff. Yeah, and you were like, can I record this? Because yeah, I mean, your eyes were like, and like um, we're going to need to talk about that after you do that. I'll tell you what you can put in there. Yeah. And they charged me two felonies on that, too. And, and favor, she dropped that. Please don't lead in the story with her getting into that cop car that they always play from that. Do they? Why? Uh, you can lead with that. She's such a protective mom. She, she like, is. She was like, can you bring powder for her? And yeah, I wish Prindle's out there keeping watch. Watchdog right there, yeah.